Hello class. Today we're going to be talking about groundwater. And the two concepts that we're going to be looking at and studying is permeability and porosity. To fully understand those two concepts, we have to talk about pore space and particle size. So let me first of all talk about particle size. Particle size in soils in particular, there are three types. Sand, silt, And the last one is clay. Sand is by far the largest particle size, like we see down here. And as you can see, most of these particle sizes are fairly large, which also allow for larger pores. Particle size is silt. Silt tends to be medium in size, and clay is the smallest. I'll talk about these other two when we see some other slides, but for right now, I'm just going to talk really about sand and this particular picture so that you understand porosity. When we look at this diagram, let's suppose for just a moment we could actually put this in a beaker, maybe a 500 ml beaker. And the other thing you'll notice is there's lots of large pores in it. That's where either air or water will reside. And uh, this pore space is measured by percent. So if we're going to look at this entire in this um, this well sorted sand in its entirety on, on a per volume basis, you'll notice that there's a lot more solid mass than there is pore space. So when we look at large particle size, typically we're seeing large pore spaces but not many of them. So water has an easy time getting through, which means it's very permeable, but the problem is there isn't much pore space available. So in sand, in well-sorted sand in this particular case, or larger particle sizes, the pore space, our percent pore space is down, but the permeability or its drainage goes up. So pore space, which is measured in percent, and permeability is measured in time, they're opposite each other. They're inverse proportion, proportionally. So if you have greater percentage of porosity, you have less amount of permeability. Let's take a look at another picture. Hopefully that'll uh, uh, clarify a little bit. In this particular case, you have sand that's poorly sorted. and has other materials in it as well. Again, we can see that sand um, has... Also, other smaller particles within it. Within the small particle sizes, like clay and silt, it also makes smaller little air spaces or pores. We still have some larger ones, but what we find is there's a less, because of these smaller particle uh, sizes, there's less of these larger uh, massive types of particle sizes, but they're smaller in their pores. So again, if we take a look at this and put it in a beaker, you actually have a greater amount of pores and less mass to contend with. So when you have a mixed sand and maybe silt or clay mixture, you see the actual porosity or percent pore space go up. Permeability, on the other hand, will go down. So if you were to compare this one with the first one, you'll notice that this one is going to have much more uh, porosity, but it'll have less permeability. So the waters that comes in here will find more pores, but also more obstacles to get around, so it takes longer for it to drain. So permeability will decrease, porosity would be increased. So let's look at our last one. All right, our third one is clay. Now, this is blown up several times because clay is very, very small. It's microscopic, as a matter of fact. And clay has a couple of other unique features in that they are very uh, polar. And water is polar as well. So clay tends to attract or hang onto uh, the water molecules so it doesn't let them go. Because it's so plate-shaped, you can see that 
the space between each particle is very, very thin. And because it's thin, it makes water, makes it very difficult for water to get from point A to point B. And because it's more of a maze and even smaller still, and the fact that water's hanging onto the clay, the permeability is way lessened. And of course, in this particular case, lots and lots of cracks and crevices and por uh, porosity or pore space so that there's a greater percentage of pores, but because they're so small and clay's hanging onto them, but permeability is lessened. So again, in this case, porosity is increased, but permeability has decreased. So here is all three of them again, and let's see what we can do to kind of summarize. On this one right here, you'll notice that it is increased permeability, but it doesn't have as much porosity or pore space than the other two. Okay, so we're comparing this per unit of volume, like whether it is like 500 mLs or 100 mLs. If we look at 500 mL beaker filled with sand, it's going to have actually less porosity than clay but permeability be greater. In other words, drainage or water running through it would be greater in this first case. In the second case, in the second case what we'll have here is we're going to have again, compared to all the rest, it's going to be greater pore space than the first one, but the permeability is going to start to fall. Because again, as water travels through this matrix, it's running into obstacles, and also the pores are getting more narrow and more narrow and more narrow, so it's harder for water to get through. There isn't as many of these nice big large ones like we had right up here in this one. They're now running into these smaller particles like clay and silt because it's more mixed, it's more sorted, um, and it's, it is, it's really... Um, being filled, all the pores are being filled up with these smaller particles, which then themselves also have smaller uh, pores. So in this one, it, in comparison to our first one, it has greater porosity, but the permeability is, is uh, hurting. Okay, and our third one here, this is clay. It's more plate-shaped. It's more polar. The pore spaces are closer together still. So we have two things working against it in the clay. It has a lot more pores than all the, the other two. But the problem with this one is clay's hanging onto the water, number one. And number two, the space between particles is so narrow, it's hard for the water to get through. So this one has the highest degree of porosity, but the lowest degree of permeability. So I hope this will help us understand the relationship. It's, it, it's an inverse relationship. The greater the amount of porosity it has, the less permeable it is, primarily because the pore space gets smaller and smaller and smaller. It's harder for the water molecules to get through it.